In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing and setting up the HP OfficeJet Pro 8025. Now, I also will be doing a separate review of this printer, so stay tuned for that. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to be notified when that review is uploaded. And also when subscribing, please remember to click on that bell icon so you're notified when that review is actually uploaded. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box. So let's open up the tape on top. And the first thing you'll see inside is a packet of manuals. Let's set that aside. We'll get back to that in a second. Next, you'll find the package of ink cartridges. And next, and very importantly, you will find the printer itself. Now you'll notice that there are two bag handles inside that allow you to lift it out of the box. So use those bag handles to lift the printer out of the box. Now this printer is slightly heavy. So if you can't lift it yourself, please get a friend or someone else to help you. You don't want to hurt yourself while pulling this out of the box. Now the method I recommend though is that you tilt the box onto any one of its sides, one of its long sides, and then you can go ahead, grab the bag handles, and then just pull that printer out. And it'll just slide out onto a table surface. Now the first thing you'll notice as you get that entire package out of the cardboard box is the power cable for the printer. It's on one of the foam end caps. So let's put that aside as well. Now it's time to get the foam end caps off the printer. So the easiest way to do it, if you can, is just to tilt the printer onto one of its sides and then pull the end caps off. And let's do that for the other side as well. Put the printer gently down on its side and then pull the the end cap off. Now we need to get this plastic off. So the trick to doing this is just to pull the plastic back a little bit, then grab the printer itself and you want to gently set it on its front face very gently. Don't bang it down and damage the printer. And then you can just pull that plastic cover off and there you go, it's gone. Now let's gently flip the printer right side up and lay it down. And we can now start setting the printer up. Now the quick start guide that I showed you earlier when we opened the box up has quite a lot of useful information on how to get this printer set up. However, in this video, I'll be walking you step by step through the entire setup process. So if you need time to actually set things up, feel free to pause this video at any point and then work on the next step. And then you can obviously continue watching the video. So the first step before we do anything is to remove some of the packing materials. There's some more packing materials, but let's remove the first set. And to do that, we're gonna lift the scan bed off the printer. Now this is an all-in-one printer, so it does have a scan bed. So we're going to remove this piece of protective foam from the scan bed. We can now close the scan bed. The next piece is this piece of tape on the front. Pull that and pull it off. And when you open this door up, there's a few more pieces of tape that you can remove. There's one piece of tape here and another piece of tape on the screen. So remove those two pieces of tape and you can temporarily close this compartment. Let's now connect the printer to a power outlet. And in order to do that, grab your power cable that I showed you earlier. Now the power port on the printer is in the back. So plug in one end of the power cable into the power port and make sure it goes in all the way. And you can plug the other end into a power outlet. So as soon as I plugged it in, it started to boot up. Now for some reason, if it doesn't boot up, you can always press the power button, which is on the left hand side. After that initial boot up sequence, it brings you to a screen where you can select Select your language. I'm going to select mine, which is English. And then it says that you've selected English as your language and it asks you to confirm it, which I'm going to do. And then it wants to know your country or region. In my case, it's the US. And then confirm that. And now it tells us that it's time to install our cartridges. And in fact, it even has this little animation that shows you exactly how these cartridges are installed. But as I said earlier, I'll be walking you step by step through the entire process. So in order to do that, we're going to open this front compartment. And then you can see this little handle on the inside. We're going to use that to open the compartment on top. And when you open it up, it'll actually stay in that position. There's a lock all the way inside that'll keep it in that position till you're done. So you don't need to hold it up, which is nice. So as soon as you open up that last compartment, you'll notice that the cartridge tray slides into view. So you can actually easily work on that cartridge tray. And the first step is to remove this piece of plastic. 
on the inside of the cartridge tray and you can trash that piece. You don't need it anymore. It's just a protective piece. Now you'll notice that the printer comes with four cartridges, a set of tricolor cartridges and a black cartridge, which is the larger cartridge. And right by the cartridge tray, you'll notice that there are corresponding markings to indicate where you should install each of these cartridges. Now these cartridges do need a little bit of prep before you install them in the printer. So let's do that. So to begin prepping each of the cartridges, you're going to pull on this pull tab and pull on that tab till the plastic covering comes off. And the next step is to remove the plastic ink covers. And in order to do that, what you're going to do is just swing these covers outwards. It's a lever that swings outwards and pops off. And once it pops off, you can proceed to trash this. You don't need it anymore. Now you want to do that for all four of your cartridges and make sure that they are prepped and ready to use. So let's install them in the printer now. Let's start with the magenta cartridge since it is farthest to the left. And you want to insert the cartridge with that ink output point all the way inside. So let's go ahead and insert it. And just for reference, you'll have this little plastic tab in front. And that's how you'll know that you've installed it the right way. And then push it down to lock it and you'll hear that click. Let's do the next one. And the next one is cyan. Again, same process. Ink output on the inside. Push it all the way in and then press it down to lock. And the last of the tricolor, which is yellow, let's push that in as well and then lock into place. And last but not least, let's do the black cartridge. Now the black cartridge fits in the middle of the slot and then snaps into place. And you'll notice that there's a pretty large gap between the other three cartridges and this one. And that's because you can actually buy an extra large version of the black cartridge. So that's what that extra space is for. So in case you had an extra large cartridge, it would fill up the entire slot. But for our cartridge, we're going to slot it right into the middle till that tab locks into place. And we're done installing the cartridges in the cartridge tray. And what we're going to do now is close the compartment on top and then close the front compartment. And as soon as you install these cartridges, it'll let you know that you've installed genuine HP cartridges. And it'll also let you know that it is initializing the ink system, as you can see here. And this should take a few seconds to complete. And it also lets you know that you shouldn't open any covers or do anything at this point. Just let it work its magic. And while the printer is still making a couple of noises in the background, it lets you know that it is ready to proceed. So we're going to hit OK to continue. And on the screen that follows, it asks you to load paper, which is what we're going to do right now. And again, as with the cartridges, it does have a built in animation that shows you how to do this. And to do this, we're going to pull out the paper tray, which is on the bottom. And once that's pulled out, there's one last piece of packing material to remove, which is this little piece of cardboard and tape up here. We're going to pull that out. So just pull that piece of tape off and let's pull that piece of cardboard out and throw it away. And next you want to open up the paper guides all the way so you can actually fit your paper inside. And let's load our paper. This is letter size or US letter size paper. You can obviously also load A4 depending on where in the world you are. And once that's done, let's close the paper tray by pushing it in. And there you go, it's closed. On screen, you'll notice there's a new message that says that we are ready to align the print head. And it says that it uses one sheet of paper. So I'm gonna hit continue. And it says that it is printing the alignment page. And as you can see here, it's now completed printing the alignment page. And we're going to place this alignment page on the scan bed in the exact orientation that this diagram shows you. So let's open up the scan bed and we're going to place this page face down on the scan bed. And we're going to line the top left hand corner of the page with that mark on the scan bed. So let's do that. Flip the page over and match it up with that mark on the scan bed. And let's close the scan bed. And once we do that, we're going to hit the scan option on screen and it says that it is scanning the alignment page. Let's wait for it to complete that process. And on the screen that follows, it says that the alignment has been successful. We're going to hit OK. So the next screen actually asks you to go to 123.hp.com or to grab your phone and scan that QR code. But you really don't want to do this just yet. There's a bit of a problem with using the computer to set this up without doing one additional step. And I discovered that this is a step that really saves you a lot of pain and pulling hair going forward. So let's go ahead and do that little bit of additional setup that'll really save us a lot of trouble going forward. So tap on that question mark right below the screen and then tap on network setup. 
And then what you want to do is tap on wireless and then it says that it is searching for wireless routers. And what I'm going to do is select my Wi-Fi network, which is Vortex 5G. Tap on that and then I'm going to touch this and enter the password. And once I'm done with the password, I'm going to hit done. And once I hit done, it asks me to confirm my settings. I'm going to hit OK to confirm. And then it tries to connect to that network and then it begins to connect to that network. And it's actually now connected to that network and it says connection successful. I'm going to hit OK and then it asks me whether I'd like to do some web services setup. I'm going to set that up later. I don't need to do that right now. And then it wants to know if I'd like to allow automatic data collection. Again, if you're comfortable with this, you could just leave that checked or you could uncheck it. It doesn't affect your experience. Hit continue. And then it wants to know how you plan to use this printer. Is it a home or business printer? For me, it's a home printer. And then it wants to know whether I plan to use it for personal or business uses. I'm going to say for personal use and then hit confirm and then it reminds me about HP Instant Ink. Couldn't care less so I'm going to hit OK and then it brings us all the way back to the screen we started with which is the screen that tells us to go to 123.hp.com. Now we're ready to get onto a phone or a computer and do the rest of the setup. So as I mentioned we're going to be setting this up using a computer. Now whether you use a Mac or a PC the process is pretty much identical. Today however I'll be using a Windows computer to set this up and in order to set this up you're going to have to open up a web browser now obviously you can use any web browser you like i usually recommend chrome open up a web browser page and type in 123.hp.com into the address bar and hit enter once that page opens up you're going to type in the name of your printer in this case it is office jet pro ad25 there you go, you can actually see the printer listed. Click on it and hit search. And now it wants you to install the app from the Microsoft App Store. We're gonna click get the app and then it asks you whether you'd like to open in Microsoft Store and I'm gonna click on that. And then it opens up the Microsoft Store. I'm gonna double click on the HP Smart App and once that opens up, you have an install button on the right hand side. Click install and it begins to install. And then it gives you a little notification that HP Smart just got installed. And I'm going to click launch to open that app. And then it asks whether you'd like to agree to all their terms of use. I'm going to hit continue. And then it asks whether I'd like to share my data with HP. Now this isn't a huge privacy issue, but again, if you're really, really concerned about your privacy, you could go ahead and click no. It doesn't really affect your experience. And once the app opens up, you'll see a add a printer option. This is the option to add a brand new printer, which is what we're gonna do. So click on the add a printer option and you'll notice that it finds our printer. In this case, it's the HP Office Jet Pro 8020 series. Ours is the 8025, so tap on that. It wants to know if you'd like to enjoy HP account benefits and register your printer. So I'm gonna hit continue. And on the window that opens up, it asks you to create an HP account. And I highly recommend doing this, especially for warranty and service purposes. So you wanna go ahead, create an HP account, if you already have one, you can obviously connect to an existing HP account, but I highly recommend doing this step before going forward. And then it seems to move on to the next page. It could take a few seconds. Then it wants to know if I'd like to sign up for HP Instant Ink. And it says that a free trial is included with my printer. And there doesn't seem to be a way to skip this. So I'm just gonna click continue and see what happens. Obviously, if you're a person who prints a lot, the HP Instant Ink plan may make a lot of sense. But for most people, it probably doesn't. And in my case, I'm just gonna select no instant ink for now. You can obviously sign up for it later if you choose to, but I'm going to say no instant ink and then hit continue. And then it asks me whether I'm sure and I'm definitely very sure about this. No, I don't want instant ink is what I'm going to click. And it has a few survey questions. Ask me how I'd be using this and I'm going to say in a home. And then it wants me to specify for personal use is what I'm going to select. And you can select whatever applies to you. 
and then hit continue and there you go the printer is now ready to use and this brings us to the end of our windows or mac setup and what i'm going to do now is get onto my smartphone and show you how to set it up using a phone if you choose to do it without using your computer the process is pretty much identical whether you use the app store for ios or the google play store so what we're going to do is go into the app store and search for the hp smart app and then you want to download that app and once it downloads let's open it up and then again like the desktop version it asks me to accept the terms and conditions i'm going to hit continue and then it wants to know whether it can send me notifications i'm going to say don't allow i don't really need those notifications next it wants to know whether i'd like to share data with hp smart i'm not going to do this for now and what you want to do once the app opens up is tap that little plus sign on the top right hand corner and then it says that hp smart smart would like to use bluetooth i'm going to say okay that's fine with me and now you can actually see a list of printers in this list you'll see the hp office jet pro 8020 series as i said ours is the 8025 i'm going to select that and then i'm going to close that little pop-up that came up and then i'm going to tap on the setup button just to make sure all the features are activated and once i tap on that it opens up this little window that asks me to register my product and then you can hit continue and again Again, as we did with the desktop version you can create your HP account or if you have one you can just log in I already have an HP account so I'm actually just going to use that and there you go it's signing in and it says it's getting set up instructions and then it reminds me about signing up for HP instant ink I'm just going to swipe through and swipe around and then I'm just going to hit continue again it doesn't seem to give me an option to skip this step and then the skip option in case you want to skip HP instant ink is is to scroll all the way down on that app and all the way down on the bottom where almost no one can see it is the option that says do not enable ink savings i'm going to tap on that then it seems to move on to the next step then it says would you like to print from other devices or computers i'm just going to say skip the step for now then it's asking me whether i'm really sure i want to do this i'm going to say yes and then it says setup is complete let's print again you can obviously go ahead and print the test page if you'd like and this pretty much completes the setup process using a smartphone folks that brings us to the end of our unboxing and setup of the hp office jet pro 8025 if you're looking to buy this printer i'll leave a link right below the video so feel free to check that out and if you found this video useful please hit that like button and subscribe to stay tuned for more reviews unboxings and how-to videos thanks for watching and see you on the next one